In this tutorial, we're going to focus on solving physics problems associated with sound intensity. So let's start with this one. What is the intensity of sound 4 meters away from a 500 watt speaker? So let's say this is the speaker and it emits sound. What intensity of sound does this person hear if he's 4 meters away from the speaker? Intensity is defined as power over area. Now the sound wave travels in all directions. So basically it emanates in a shape of a sphere. So we need to use the surface area of a sphere and not the area of a circle. So the intensity is defined as the power divided by 4 pi r squared, where r is the distance between a source and a point of interest. So in this example, R is 4. So the power is 500 watts. And we're going to divide it by 4 pi times 4 square meters, or 4 meters squared. So it's 500 divided by 4 pi times 4 squared. And that will give you an intensity of 2.49 watts per square meter. And so that's the answer for part A. Now part B, how much energy is absorbed by the eardrum per minute if the surface area of the air is 60 square millimeters? Now we saw that intensity is power divided by area. So power is intensity times area. And our goal is to look for the energy. Power is work divided by time. Work and energy has the same unit, so we can say that power is the transfer of energy per time. So the transfer of energy is power multiplied by time. And the power is intensity times area. So we need to take the intensity, multiply by the area, and multiply by the time in seconds to get the energy emitted. So let's start with the time. We want to calculate the energy absorbed by the eardrum per minute. So one minute is 60 seconds. So that's T. We already have the intensity. All we need now is the area in square meters. So the area of the eardrum is 60 square millimeters. How can we convert that to meters? Now we know that one meter is equal to 1,000 millimeters. But notice we have a square. So we need to square the conversion factor. So it's going to be 60 divided by 1,000 squared. And so that's going to be 6 times 10 to the negative 5 square meters. So that's the surface area of the eardrum. So now we have everything we need to calculate the energy. So the energy is going to be the intensity, which is 2.49 watts per square meter multiplied by the area of 6 times 10 to the 5 square meters multiplied by 60 seconds. So we can see the unit square meters cancel. So it's 2.49 times 6 times 10 to the minus 5 times 60. And so that's going to be 8.96 times 10 to the negative 3 joules. Now, if you want to understand why the unit is going to be in joules, well, for one thing, energies are always in joules. But you need to know that the unit watts is joules per second. So when you multiply that by seconds, that will give you the energy in joules. So that's the answer. It's 8.96 times 10 to the minus 3 which is the same as 0 0.00896 joules. Number two, the sound intensity is three times 10 to the minus six watts per square meter at a distance of 10 meters away from the source. How much power is emitted by the source? We know that intensity is power divided by area and power is intensity times area. 
and we need to use the surface area of a sphere, so that's 4 pi r squared. So then the power is going to be the intensity, which is 3 times 10 to the minus 6 watts per square meter, multiplied by 4 pi times 10 meters squared. And so the power at the source is going to be 3.77 times 10 to the minus 3 watts. And we can convert that to milliwatts. There's 1,000 milliwatts per watt. So we could say it's about 3.77 milliwatts at the source. Number three. The intensity of a sound wave is 100 watts per square meter at a distance of 3 meters. What is the intensity of the sound wave at a distance of 6 meters? So let's say this is the source or the speaker. And so at a distance of 3 meters, the intensity is 100. If we double the distance to 6 meters, what is the new intensity? What is it going to be? Now, there's something called the inverse square law. And it states that the intensity of a wave is inversely related to the square of the distance. So 1 over 2 squared is 4. I mean, 1 over 4, not 4. So what that means is that if you double the distance, the intensity is going to be 1 fourth of its value, or you got to divide it by 4. So as we double the distance from 3 to 6, the intensity is going to be reduced from 100 to 25 because 100 divided by 4 is 25. Now, what if we triple the distance? Let's say if we make it 9 meters instead of 6 meters. Well, the intensity is going to be proportional to 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. So it's going to decrease by a factor of 9. 100 divided by 9 is 11.1 .1 watts per square meter. And so that's how you could use the inverse square law to calculate the intensity at different distances. But now let's use a formula to get these answers as well. So let's write a ratio of two intensities, I1 and I2. I2 is going to be the power of the source divided by 4 pi times R2 squared. And I1 is P over 4 pi R1 squared. Now we don't have a subscript for P because the source is the same. So in this example, we can cancel P and we could cancel 4 pi. So I2 divided by I1 is equal to 1 over R2 squared divided by 1 over r1 squared. So we can rewrite that fraction, this part, like this. We could say it's 1 over r2 squared divided by 1 over r1 squared. And perhaps you're familiar with the expression keep change flip. Let's keep the first fraction the same. Let's change division to multiplication and flip the second fraction. So therefore, we could say that the ratio of the intensities, I2 to I1, is equal to R1 squared over R2 squared. So this equation is associated with the inverse square law. Let's write down what we have to get the answer for part A. So I1 is 100, and it corresponds to R1, which is 3 meters. We're looking for I2, and R2 is 6 meters. So it's going to be I2 over 100, and that's equal to R1 squared, which is 3 squared, divided by R2 squared. Now let's cross multiply. So I2 times 6 squared. 6 squared is 36. And then 100 times 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 100 is 900. So it's going to be 900 
divided by 36, and so this gives us an intensity value of 25 watts per square meter, which is what we had for part A. Now let's do the same thing for part B. So I1 is still going to be 100. R1 is going to be 3. The only thing that changes in this problem is R2, which is 9 meters now. So it's going to be I2 over 100, and that's going to be R1 squared, which is 3 squared, over R2 squared, which is 9 squared. So let's cross multiply. This is going to be 9 squared times I2, which is 81 I2. And then 100 times 3 squared, that's going to remain 900. So it's 900 divided by 81. And so I2 is 11.1 .1 watts per square meter. So that's how you can find the new intensity at a different distance if you use the inverse square law or this equation.